I want to collaborate with people, but the, the problem is, is that I, I my my vision is so damn specific that pe other people's visions coming in, I, I start feeling like, hey, you're, you're kind of coming in and messing my stuff up, man. Like I, I have I have a sound <laughs> that I've been working <laughs> yeah, decades yeah. on, man. I, I, it's polished, you know. I've yeah. been polishing this thing. And uh, I want to be open enough to let people come in with their ideas and everything. Um, but like I said, I, I think most of our ideas, and I, something I hear, I heard from Jordan Peterson, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, most of our ideas are bad, stupid, and dangerous. And so people who want to like just be impulsive that like, oh, all of my ideas are good. It's like, no, they're not. You know, like we, we have to <laughs> get to write a hundred songs to get to the right. 10 good ones. Yeah. You know, there are some lucky people, the band happened to be really well go work together democratically yeah. and their core is really good, like like the, the single person wouldn't be able to accomplish kind of a band, but then that's so rare, far yeah. in between. Yeah. So that's what I'm still realizing. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, and that's, and that's, that's exactly where I'm coming from, is yeah. like, when there's too many minds, too, there's too many uh, cooks in the kitchen, man. Somebody has to lead, you know, and, and it's like, sometimes, you know, it, people think that like, oh, I want to be the leader. It's mm -hmm. like, no, you don't. Trust me. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's responsibility mm -hmm. and you, you are, you, you have to be accountable. You have to answer to people. Um, you have to pay your players before you get paid. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that's a big one, man. I know, totally, yeah. You know, because uh -huh. if... It, like, like the the catch twenty two, or I guess not the catch twenty two, but the um, because I kind of treat my players like, okay, you're serving this band, you're kind of serving my songs here, and so you you know you guys are kind of like the you're, you're the employees, okay, um, but because they are putting themselves in an employee position. Um, well, I have to respect that, well, and so they. Them, yeah. So it's like I've got a, a bass player that I play with right now, and, and he's a he's a professional guy. This is what he does, and so him and the drummer tend to get paid. They they, they tend to always get paid their bass pay because mm -hmm. I do that because I want to keep my good players, mm -hmm. and even if they want to be, you know, quote unquote, kind of like employees to the band. That's that's I respect that, and so I treat them that way. Okay. I don't treat them like shareholders, because right, right. if you're a shareholder, you're taking the risk with me, baby. Right, right. It's risk, mm -hmm. and the way that I uh, balance that out is that when when I do come across a really good paying gig, because they happen, mm -hmm. you know, you know, thousand bucks for a gig, mm -hmm. they happen. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when those days do show up. Hey, I, I treat everybody, you know, a little bit better, but on those on those occasions, I will actually pocket some of the remainder. I'll cut everybody equally, and if there's remainder, it's going to the CEO. <laughs> and it's not it's not greed. Mm -hmm. It's because there has to be a balance that. You're going to go out there and you're going to be playing mostly like small clubs, not very good paying gigs. And so in order to keep the band happy, you, you have to put them first. And you have to be willing to kind of take that hit. Like, okay, well, I'll, I'll try to make my money up in CD sales, t-shirt sales, and tips, right? So, so that can actually help and sub subsidize so that way I'm not getting basically... You know, I'm getting 50 bucks at the end of the gig. Everybody else is getting 100 because you know, I, I don't want to be right. unfair to myself. Mm -hmm. But there's times where you have to be. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to keep your your good players. Right. And and so there is there's it's a bit of a double edged sword. You know, like you you don't really want people to like have an employee mindset because they're like, okay, well I'm here, I'm playing, and pay me, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah. That's not in my job description. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not it's, gonna do that. It becomes impersonal. It's like, dude, it's a yeah. band. It's like this is the most personal thing that you know. We're on the road together. We're like, you know, cramped in a van. Yeah. You know, it's like we're we're in this together. Right. But so I got a question about yeah. pay. Like, say, whenever you play a gig and then you get paid, and then of course you pay your 
you know, the people you were playing with. But how about the time for preparing for, you know, rehearsal to come up with the three-hour set? Do you pay for it, or just uh, that's like... So there, there are times if if I feel like okay, we've got a really big gig. But you know, because you are already established with those, you know, hiring people. But yeah, say you know, in my but, position, I'm I'm gonna start okay hiring people. Right. Then we gotta come up with a three hour set. So yes. We got a lot of rehearse. So, basically, what what I do when when I have to rehearse for a gig, and it's like a you know a very important gig. There are times where I will pay people their gas money to rehearse. Okay, so gas money level. Gas money. <laughs> Whatever that means. Okay, good. That's good to know because that's the one question. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, you know, if you think you're going to profit off of me by showing up to practice, yeah. you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I you know. know what I mean? It's really impossible. Like that, I mean, well, it's like, I mean, that's that, and that's the problem is that, like, a lot of these, a lot, a lot of the players will actually act somewhat psychopathic to towards the leader, <laughs> and they'll be like, "Hey, man, I'm entitled to get, I'm entitled to getting paid, uh -huh. you know, and it, uh, even for practice." And like, this is well, and I've, I've dealt with guys like that, and okay. it's like, you know what, like, you're not gonna make it because I'm not gonna, you know, um, because I am, I'm open and I'm mostly agreeable, mm -hmm. but man, I can spot that, I can spot that fucking narcissism from a mile away, man. I'm like a bloodhound. <laughs> After so many experiences. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you become a bloodhound when it comes to narcissists, man. Right. It's like, oh, this this guy is trying to take advantage of me. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it just doesn't work with me. You right. know, I, I, I know how to be, I know how to be cantankerous when I need to be. Yeah. Um, but but you know, it, it's a really good question, question though, because yeah. how how are you gonna, like, well, these, these people, like, I need, I need them to commit time to me, right, once a week, like, we got to get our set tight, and people that aren't willing to even put in that minimal amount of time, and, and, and at least, at least for, like, a couple months, it's not like you, you need to practice once a week for a fucking year, like, you, you need to do that, like, for a couple months, you know, and bring it to the level, and then, then you can bring it to, because it doesn't take a whole year to get to that level, it takes, like, two to three months of intense, you know, just once sure. a week. Yeah. It's it's amazing how, dude. It's amazing how much better you get as a band with with little amounts of uh, practice. So that way you're you're not drilling it into people so hard that they're actually getting sick of it. You know, you don't want people getting sick of the band before you've gone out and played a gig. Mm -hmm. You know, so there has to be that balance of like, you know, if you're really starting to see that improvement. You can you can back you can back off the the tyranny a little bit you know like you know they'll be you know cracking the whip so hard but um but you got to crack the whip a little bit at the beginning you know exactly. so there, you got you got to hold people accountable you know you, you need you need one thing that I started telling uh, my roommate and band member Aaron is I, I just got to this point man where I was getting so fed up with people just not putting any work into it not in, not even putting work into their own instruments like like what are you doing when you're not around us like are you playing like no <laughs> like you don't even put time into your own damn instrument man people like that they're not they're just not really accountable and they're not they're not <laughs> professional and it really is hard to separate you know separating the wheat from the chaff so so to speak man like how do you, you know how many Musicians you have to go through before you finally start finding that one like oh, I think this guy I think I can actually work with this guy mm -hmm. I enjoy being around this guy mm -hmm. like you know There's a friendship here, and there's a mutual respect, and he's not just he's not in this because he thinks we're gonna get rich But he's also somebody who respects it on a professional level that when I do talk business and I talk about raising standards and 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 Things like responsibility and accountability. This guy doesn't get fidgety on me. In fact, he gets a little more, you know, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's like so. I told my my uh, band member Aaron, I want fucking warriors in my band. I want warriors. Mm -hmm. And it was like it was the only way that I could really explain the 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 type of person that it really takes. And I'm not talking about tyrannical warriors. I'm talking about you know I'm talking about like you know. 
Knights of the Round Table kind of shit, man. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's at, we're at a, they're at a round table because of, there is e equality, but it's equality because of equality of competency. See, that's what I was thinking when you Merit. said that. Uh, you know, it takes two months to be, you know, like come up with the a tight three hour set. But I was thinking, yeah, that's given each player's are pro professional and willingness and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Their own practice is done already. We're going to rehearse as a band, not, uh, you know, individual practice. Right. But that's in the, uh, you know, ideal setting, right? I know, <laughs> so, I know, I like know. Like said, it, yeah. that's well, my, my question to you is going to be like, well, you know, definitely like, what are the biggest challenges that you're facing right now? Like, like what's going on with your band? Where, where are you at? What, what are, and what are the biggest challenges you're being faced with right now? Right now, it's a very, very fundamental problem. Like, <laughs> people to play with, you know, what the people that we are talking about, the willingness to be a part of the, the round table. Do they, do do they not, do they not want to gig? Or you know, um, is gigging an issue? Because that, that's one thing I found ironic with players these days. It's like, it's like they want to. I'll, I'll find players that are they'll, they'll actually want to like practice, but they'll actually want to practice or, or you know do more of that than actually go out and, and, and gig. And it's like whoa 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 whoa. whoa. Like, no, it needs to be the opposite. Right. You you need to like if you're going to be in my band, I, I need you to like want to rehearse less and, and go gig more. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I, I find it ironic that there's a lot of players out there that are afraid to travel and they're afraid to gig, and 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 so I don't I don't know if that's anything if if you've come across that or, or uh, you know when I say like a play the gig that means you know that it's a lot of lot of connotation you got to practice or you know do the rehearsal in order to play in front of uh, people in gigs right yeah. and then that your time to travel and everything the commitment so that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of uh, people who wanted to jam with at the party and, you know, yeah. and stone, which is fun and everything. Yeah. But now it's not the same thing as a gigging band. Yeah. So that's my fundamental problem to mm -hmm. find people. So that, just, that brings me to the point where, you know, you were talking about the other day that, well, you know, I hire people, which I never thought of before. Mm -hmm. And then, wait a second. Okay, maybe that's, there's something to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The commitment and then now hearing that. They and and the the there is a double edged sword with that because the the guys that are the hired guns you know they're they're also being hired by other bands so now it's like <laughs> so now you have to like oh. it's it's hard to um, you know that that's one of the <laughs> yeah it's, can I have a list of your player <laughs> yeah so so like I'll I'll deal in all these redundancies <laughs> where I've got I've got three drummers that I can call <laughs> oh. you know at, at any time yeah, that's another question yeah. That I wanted to ask you. That the layer of the, the your hired gun. So you just mentioned the uh, three yeah. drummers. How many bass? Um, <laughs> two. I got I got two bass players that okay. I can kind of flip flip through right now. And, that, and, and that's not even that that actually makes me feel like I'm kind of on the bare bones a little bit. Really? But but the one guy that's been playing with me on bass mainly, um, you know, he does it for a living, and yeah. so so he he he's pretty. Uh, you know, I, I can count on him. Right. Yeah. For so, the for the most part, you yeah, know. Yeah. But but he does play with other bands, and so yeah. scheduling conflicts suck, man. Totally. It, but that's so yeah. That's how I deal with it. I I, I deal in redundancies, mm -hmm. and then it does take time. That you know, you're gonna have to get tight with all three variations right. of that. Right. Right. You know, and it's like, but when it comes to gigging and booking gigs, I don't ever want to be in a position. And 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 I, because I used to do this, I used to like, um, <laughs> I get a, a gig opportunity, and then I would say, let me call you back in a couple of days, okay, because I got a consensus, so I can get the <laughs> yeah approval from everybody. Yeah, that and, makes sense. Though. Yeah, but but you it started to, to really to irritate yes. me because <laughs> I need to be in a position where it's like, oh, I've got this gig. What's the date? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if if I can do it, right, that should be, right, right. That's ample. Like I'm yeah. technically I'm the only guy that has to show up, and that that's another uh, mm -hmm. attribute to going under my my name. Right. Technically, I'm the only guy that has to show up. Right. Uh, it makes total sense, though. You know, but that's the thing, man. It's like if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be the leader of anything, all that shit rolls downhill. All the problems are your problems. Everything is your fault. It's all your responsibility. It's all your accountability. And and there are some people that. 
fucking fold. They fold under that kind of pressure, man. They don't yeah. want to be. They don't want to be accountable for other people, man. 